Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. LG Watcher Bane on wrist. Been playing with it for a while after we unboxed it. Hopefully you guys watch that. Uh, what we want to do now though is go software tour. So as you're well aware, this is the first Android Wear watch running 5.1. So we've got it on here. Uh, and 5.1, by the way, is coming to the th Moto 360 and the G Watch R and the Zen Watch and the Smartwatch 3 and all those other ones. This again is just the first to have it. So we want to show you what's new, uh, and so you can uh, get prepared for uh, what to expect and all that good stuff. There's lots of new stuff. This wa this update was announced a week or so ago. Things like Wi-Fi and emoji drawing and uh, an app drawer and things like that are all in here. So want to make sure you're aware of all of it. So we're gonna try to be fast, but there's actually quite a bit to cover. So uh, if I swipe this down though first and jump over here, oops, wrong one. Turn that off before I uh, waste all of my battery. Uh, in settings, and we swipe all the way down to the bottom, just because we always like to show you this. So 5.1.1, you can see that there. And this is actually Android build LJZ13E. I did receive an update shortly after playing with this, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't look at what the build number was prior, but we're, we're on 5.1.1 and it's a pretty big deal. So uh, the first thing you're gonna do when you get this update is this right here wrist flick to uh, jump between uh, all of your notifications. So no second hand needed here, just flipping through. Uh, I can actually go backwards as well. So I can go backwards and back. Oop, you gotta be slow going backwards. It's just a little flick at a wrist and flick. And one more and there we go. So even if you were to get a notification and you get your little card preview and you don't want that, you can just flick that bad boy away, which is kind of cool. Uh, another thing to show you here is, uh, so inbox, for example, I have a stack of emails in here, right? So I've got some tests and things like that. They now allow you to swipe away individual um, cards in there, if you will. So I can swipe like this one away bring it back if I want. Now, previously, if you went to swipe something away and something like that with a stacked deck of uh, notifications, they would all go away. But now you can do that individually, which is kind of awesome. Uh, let's jump in here to this Hangouts conversation. You can see I've been testing it here. Uh, we reply and you can speak now or jump into draw emoji. And so in here, I can try to draw an emoji see what happens and wasn't even close because my drawing's really terrible but it does give you some options and so choose that or you can just tap on the emoji button and uh, go in and select all of your own here so and tap the check and I will go ahead and send so you can now draw emoji and have some fun there uh, the next thing to show you though and uh, notification spam from myself here um, so the next thing to show you is the new app drawer so if we tap on the screen now gets you into a three paneled sort of setup here where you have app drawer, favorite people, and then you have your speak now section. I don't know why my contacts are temporarily unavailable, but they are. Um, so if we swipe back out, uh, this is actually a drawer hidden off to the right that you can swipe out, but if you just tap on the screen, that will get you in there as well. So if we're looking at apps, this is where you'll find shortcuts to like settings and keep and your stopwatch and basically any app that's available to your watch from your phone. And so you can just, you know, tap on them and uh, they should load. So there's a timer and I could set that up if I want to, but I'm just going to swipe that away. Uh, one thing I did want to show you though is in apps like Google Keep. So this is a new feature. So if I were to go into like this app, let's say, uh, Android Wear now allows you to have apps stay always on sort of like your watch face does. So if I cover that up, you'll see I have a black and white version of that list I was looking at in Google Keep, which is kind of awesome. So if I'm at the grocery store or something, um, I can uh, continue to look at that without having to open it up every single time. So that's kind of a cool new feature. Uh, again, if we swipe over here, this is where your contacts are and I'm not sure why they're not showing up, but it lists all of your starred contacts. So all the contacts that you've starred on Android will show up here and you can call and text them and things like that. And if we swipe over here, this is where you get into your speak now section with all of your, you know, start a run, email someone, what's my agenda, navigate, all that stuff. Uh, you should still be able to do that from the front screen just by saying, okay, Google, and that jumps you over to the Speak Now screen. So that works as well. So that, that hasn't really changed all that much. Uh, if we swipe this down, which you saw me do earlier, you can see they've changed this. Uh, so instead of that three button carousel that was really confusing, you can now just tap on which of these notifications settings you wanna have. 
Also theater mode and brightness boost, which used to be called sunlight mode or something like that. You can actually sort of tell if they're on or off. They used to be a little confusing, I'm not gonna lie. When you used to tap on one, it was tough to get back in there and decide if it was on or off or whatnot, so. Uh, and then finally over here in settings, and we're gonna jump back in there. So setting some new stuff, font size, you can now adjust font size. So you do have small, normal, and large. Uh, depending on where you're going. I'm gonna leave mine on small just because it seems to look a little bit better for my eyes. Uh, another thing there is wrist gesture. So that's that sort of twisting motion I just showed you. So you can just tap that to toggle that on or off. Wi-Fi settings. So big deal here, watches that have Wi-Fi in them, uh, they will now be supported in here via Wi-Fi. So if we tap in here, you can see it starts out with Wi-Fi automatic mode. And basically what that tries to do is if you turn your Bluetooth off on your phone, it'll try to connect to Wi-Fi networks that uh, are sort of attached to your phone. So I'll sort of show you uh, if we tap on that, this is going to turn uh, Wi-Fi automatic off actually. And so it's going to try to connect to uh, Wi-Fi networks that I've already connected to. So there's my home network. You can see these other ones in there. Um, so I'm actually going to tap on Wi-Fi automatic though which for some reason turns Wi-Fi off, so I'm gonna turn it back on. Yes, I know, this is uh, all very confusing. Um, so there, Wi-Fi automatic's back on. So I'll show you a second here. If we swipe this down, you'll notice battery percentage is, uh, is basically the only thing you see in there. So I've got my uh, Galaxy S6 here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off Bluetooth. So I've got Bluetooth turned off now, and this is going to tell me you should probably turn Bluetooth back on. Uh, if we jump over to the watch, though, you'll notice that cloud icon that typically shows when your watch is no longer connected isn't showing. It was there briefly. Uh, and if we swipe this down now, you'll see a little Wi-Fi icon because I'm now connected via Wi-Fi, still synced up with my phone. Um, and if we jump in here to Wi-Fi settings, should see I am now connected to my home network. So. Uh, it's kind of cool. So if you're if you're away from your phone, say you leave your phone downstairs and you go upstairs in your house, you can still be connected, syncing with your phone um, over Wi-Fi, which is which is awesome because you don't always want to carry both of these with you. Uh, and that way, it sort of syncs across everywhere. So pretty cool there. Um, and then I can actually turn Bluetooth back on in the Android Wear app. And if we jump over here and swipe this down, you'll see the Wi-Fi icon is now gone. So I'm back connected to my phone directly um, via, via Bluetooth. All right, so then the last thing I would show you also here in settings would be screen lock. I don't believe this was in any of the previous versions. Basically, it says auto lock watch after you take it off. So assuming you do that properly and set up your pattern, uh, and set your watch down for a while, I would imagine it would recognize the fact that you aren't, haven't been moving, and so then if you picked it up, you should have a lock on there. Uh, I've tried it a couple of times by setting it down and just leaving it there. It doesn't seem to lock, so it could take maybe a couple of minutes of time. Anyways, how it would work is if, uh, if I were to, uh, let me just swipe out of here and jump back in there, um, and I should just be able to manually lock it now. So lock screen now so I can lock it and yep and so then if someone were to pick my watch up with that automatic lock on it should look like this and so in order to do anything they would have to enter in that pattern and then it would unlock and I'd be able to do whatever I want to do so that's the last thing I want to show you uh, this has been a tour though of Android 5.1 on Android Wear so again it's coming to all your devices it should be out I would imagine fairly soon now that this device is available uh, I would imagine that OTA update is going to start rolling out to more so if there's anything else you want to see uh, let us know. Uh, we are Droid Life. Peace.